let's give a round of applause again for the Ego Korean drummers. They're part of UC Berkeley. And they, uh, their mission is to share in the joy and the beauty of Korean traditional drumming, known as Pumu. In doing so, they hope to spread the awareness of Korean culture in the Bay Area and beyond. So thank you to them. Good afternoon. I'm Kathy Aoyang Turner. It's my honor to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you here today, a celebration for the Immigrant Heritage Wall number two. Today is a day of many emotions, happiness, joy, reflection, sadness, appreciation, and yes, hope. Six years ago, my family and I visited the Aoyang family village in Daleng, Jungsan, uh, Guangdong, China. In fact, my seventh cousin once removed Grant Din, whom a lot of you know here, who helped you do the plaques, came with us. While the village was, had relative prosperity and certainly m was modern by even today's standards, I cannot imagine what life would have been like growing up there and what direction my life might have taken. But to the eternal gratitude of their descendants, my grandfather, Ah Yang Kang Hin and his wife, Dr. Faith Sai So Long, had the courage and the desire to establish a new life in a new country, the United States of America. While they were fortunate not to be detained at Angel Island and only to pass through, Angel Island Immigration Station is today a symbol of immigrant journey and the sacrifices that so many people have taken seeking a better life. Last July, at the celebration of Immigrant Heritage Wall Number 1, over 20 descendants of Aoyang Kamhin and Faith Sai So Long gathered here for a family reunion. How many of you are here today to, uh, uh, for a family reunion also? That's wonderful. Congratulations. I know that it was very meaningful for me to have participated in that reunion. And it was really wonderful to have three generations of, uh, of Aoyangs at that reunion. The youngest members are now fifth generation Americans. And now I'm a grandmother of a two year old. And my grandson, who's named Rocco Aoyang Turner Stern, is somebody uh, some I hope to have know someday and to understand his birthright a birthright rich in the tradition of hard work, courage, and sacrifice. A birthright that respects all races and celebrates diversity as a cornerstone of our, dem our democracy. And a birthright that respects civic participation and discourse. A birthright that understands that immigration is an important component to the intellectual, social, and economic success of the United States. So thank you for being here today and we at Angel Island Immigration Station thank you for joining us as we continue to tell the story of Pacific Coast immigration and the importance of immigration in contemporary life. Um, I would like to um, recognize um, two board members, other board members uh, besides Buck who, and uh, Henry who are going to be up here. Um, and that is Jerry Wong. There's Jerry over there. Everybody knows Jay. <laughs> and, um, oh, actually it was Henry was the other one. <laughs> Henry Durr. <laughs> but Henry's going to speak later on. Okay, enough about me and my family. Um, I also would like to thank the staff of the uh, Angel Island State Park who uh, did a really magnificent job this year. They did it last year too. Um, but it was a much more manageable crowd of people that we have here today. So thank you to Ben to Steve and to the entire staff. Thanks. Thanks also to Dan Kwan, who designed the wall and designed much of uh, the landscape here. Thank you to Elaine Joe, who uh, designed many of the plaques that are on the wall. Um, we couldn't have done it without her. And I want to thank two other um, staff members of Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation because they work way, way above beyond the call of duty. And that is Grant Din and Julie Fong.
Um, my last thank you is really to all the docents and the volunteers that make this happen here at the immigration station. Without them, we would not be able to tell the story of what's going on and what has gone on um, at this place of great sadness and detention and um, trials and tribulations for many of our ancestors. And we would not be able to have the beautiful place that we come here now today to, to enjoy and to reflect upon our, um, our past. OK. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, some of you I know have already been in room 105 in the barracks, but Roy Chan is there to um, instruct you and to help you learn more about how you can investigate and research your family roots. So if you're interested in doing that, please join Roy after our program today, and he can help you with that. Also, um, I want to make an announcement that anybody with a ro yellow wristband who needs to um, go onto a van, would you please meet down here at the bell, and you can get your ride back to Ayala Cove, people with a yellow wristband. Those with a green wristband should meet up at the bathrooms in the back over there. Um, here's another one. I have two tickets for the Tiburon Ferry. So check and see if you still have your tickets to the Tiburon Ferry, because if not, these may be yours. So let me know. And lastly, uh, I have asked to make an announcement about the California Tan Fran Assembly Center Memorial Committee. Um, they are starting a uh, campaign um, to recognize recognize people who um, went through the Tan Fran uh, and were detained at Tan Fran, Japanese Americans. Um, there is a brochure that's under the tent, also up um, on the other side of the, uh, the stairway to the barracks. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the president of the board of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation, Buck G. Thank you, Kathy. This? Sorry, I'm not that short. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the board of directors of the Angel Island Immigration Station Foundation, I bid you all welcome. Welcome to the Immigration Station here on Angel Island, a national historic uh, landmark and the symbol of Pacific immigration. For those of you who are bit, who've been here before, we hope you're here because you've now added your own voice to those stories we can find on this site, that you've carved out a place on the new wall we have. For those, who, for those of you who've been here, who, who have been here for the first time, we hope that we, you find your day here memorable, educational, and maybe inspirational. We hope you find, whether in the poems, in the barracks, or the names now engraved in the new wall, your own personal connection to the story of immigrants, their journey to America, and their legacy in America. If we look back just a century ago, back to 1900, America was home to 184,000 Asian immigrants, less than one quarter of 1% of the national population. As recently as 1964, this was only a half of 1%. As Judy Young and Eric Lee's book on Angel Island that was published in 2010, a recount point, that they recounted poignant stories from a number of different immigrants number of different immigrants from China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, Russia, Mexico, and even India. But the abolishment of restricted immigration policies in 1965 opened up a new chapter in the immigration story here. In 1960, there was less than one million Asian Americans in this country. By, 20, by 2002, seven million had immigrated. One and a half million from the Philippines, another one and a half million from Vietnam and Southeast Asia, a million from China, a million from India, and almost a million from South Korea. But what ties those seven million who came here in the last 30 years 
the recent in the recent past to the half a million immigrants processed here through Angel Island. It was dreams. It was American dreams, dreams that a poor immigrant could start a small business and send and make enough money, raise a middle class family, send his kids to Sanford and Cal, like my father did uh, when he had his small Chinese restaurant in Oroville. Or dreams that a descendant's child could go to college and become a lawyer, like Ming Chin, whose grandparents came through Angel Island, has now risen to be Associate Justice of the California Supreme Court. And maybe even dreams from a father, dreams that an immigrant son could one day become President of the United States, maybe like Barack Obama. That's the everlasting meaning of this place, of Angel Island. Like its sister station on Ellis Island, this site is a tangible symbol of the role of immigration and a reminder of the contributions of immigrants to American success. But unlike Ellis Island, this place tells a different story. It reminds us that this country has always had an issue with its new immigrants. So I want to close by thanking everybody for adding your names on the new wall. Those names help remind us what makes Angel Island important to the people who came to this island and the legacy they left of this country. They journeyed across the Pacific to land here, knowing that America did not welcome them, yet they came. In history books, they're nameless, faceless, an anonymous mass of people immigrating to America. But here on this island, on that wall, you only need to look at their names to know who they are, what they did, and what they mean to you, to all of us. For creating a place where the past connects to the present, and for helping us build Angel Island into a national symbol of Pacific immigration, I, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Immigration Station Foundation, thank you. Now, I'd like to welcome one of our important partners, Danita Rodriguez, who is the Marin, Direct Marin District Superintendent of California State Parks. Danita. Thank you, Beth. Welcome on this beautiful day. You can tell it's September here in the Bay Area. For those that are not from the Bay Area, the summertime does feel anything like this in September, so I get very excited about September uh, for the weather. So I would like to welcome everybody for coming here to this beautiful day today. One of the reasons that we have 279 of our California state parks, one of the reasons is because of their statewide significance. And we think about Angel Island, it definitely has that statewide significance. Not only is it statewide or nationwide, but of course it's worldwide. And here as we sit and stand here at the immigration station, it really does talk about worldwide significant issues dealing with immigration. It's an honor to be here with everybody here, standing here with your families and all the connections that you have here at Angel Island at the immigration station. How many of you actually have a plaque over here on our, what I'm gonna call the donor wall? Very good, thank you so much. And I, I touched on saying that we, it, that I called it a donor wall, but really it is a lot more than a donor wall. You've probably gone into museums and libraries and some other uh, places and seen, you know, these folks that have donated to make whatever that facility happen and, and their contributions. But when we first started talking about this wall and what that would look like and how Dan Kwan designed it, it really became a lot more than just a, quote, donor wall. It really does tell the story, like Kathy and, and Buck mentioned, about what happened here at Angel Island at the immigration station and some of those personal stories. And typically, when we have these, quote, donor walls in our state parks, we do have them for a certain period of time. However, because they, this wall and the second wall have become so important in telling the story of the immigration, uh, this immigration story, this really is actually part of the landscape here in telling the story. So for me, it's not just the donor wall that we're going to simply make go away in a certain period of time and that it will continue to tell stories. As I've come here throughout the years since we donated the first 
the first wall, dedicated the first wall. I've seen families come over and enjoy the stories that have been told on the plaques. I have personally led a few tours through the station, and of course, one of the stops that we make is at the, the wall. And so again, for me, it really becomes part of how we tell the story and how we, we actually have the wall as part of the whole landscape and part of the station itself. As Beck and Kathy mentioned, this whole area is more than just a place in time. Some of our parks do tell a place in time, but sometimes it's really hard to have that connection. Here at Angel Island, there's many connections from our military history to, of course, our immigration history. And it's very exciting for me when I see the gathering of people here today with their families taking pictures and really being able to say, this is my connection and this is how I got here. And this is how I've been able to be part of America. My own history in terms of immigration, I have two sides of my family. One side that came through Ellis Island from the European end from Hungary and Austria. And the other part of my family actually crossed the border at Mexico. So I have kind of two diverse ends of, of how I actually came to be. And so um, as we think about immigration and the issues about immigration, as has been mentioned before, we really need to think about the sensitivity of diversity and where we need to put that in terms of priority and how we treat all of that. So I'm really happy that we're able to have our immigration station that really can tell the story and all of the issues surrounding immigration. What's next here at, the, at this section of our park, up here up on the hill, as you know, we have our hospital. And for those that don't know, it's our next big project that the foundation has taken under their wings. And we've had some grants. We've had private donations. And so hopefully we're going to get that next phase done. We've got it stabilized. It's, it's coming along. It's made a huge change over the last year. And next is the really exciting part about the icing on the cake, which is all the fun exhibits and all the things, once again, to tell the story about the hospital um, aspect of the immigration station. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to be part of that, you can talk to um, Buck G and some of his staff there at the foundation and how you can help continue to make that phase um, successful. So once again, I want to thank everybody for being here on such another significant day. The stories that have been told on the wall is just so fabulous to me. And every time I, I go read the, the various stories and all, I just it's very, very telling on our community support for not only Angel Island State Park, but for this particular place on the island. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to have remembrances from three people whose, an, uh, whose dis ancestors were associated with Angel Island. And uh, they have different stories to tell, but I think you will find all three of them very compelling. The first one is Cheryl Ann Park from Anaheim. Cheryl Ann is the granddaughter of So C. Anna M. She went through Angel Island as an immigrant in 1914, and of uh, Kyung So Park, who was a U.S. immigrant in 1904. Carol Thank you. Good afternoon. In July of last year, someone in my very large extended family discovered on YouTube the Angel Island virtual tour by Dan Kwan. This spread like wildfire through the Park family with a message to pay close attention at the six minute mark. This is when Dan Kwan stands in the women's quarters in front of a large photo banner cropped from a family picture we all knew, one of my grandmother and two of my aunts taken here on Angel Island in 1914. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cheryl Ann Park. I am the proud granddaughter of So C. Anna M. If you would like to see what my grandmother looked like, there's an absolutely beautiful picture of her, though I may be biased, of my <laughs> grandmother and two of my aunts in that building behind us. I'm honored to speak as Anna M's granddaughter at this dedication.